Welcome to the Park Flyer Podcast, where we discuss the ups and downs of the new RC Flyer. Join your hosts, Michael and Jay, as they take flight at the park. Now on with the show. Hey everybody, welcome to the Park Flyer Podcast. I'm Michael from Arizona, and with me always, my good friends, Jay from the hills of Texas. And A.K. Mike in Texas. <laughs> that was a... That was quite the intro there, Jay. You get excited about something? I do. I get excited because we're going to talk about flying stuff. As oh, opposed that's true, to, too, I guess. As yeah. opposed yeah. to, like, you know, I don't know, fixing fixing doorknobs or, <laughs> you know, uh, planing wood. Uh, uh-huh. We're talking about flying planes. Pulling so, weeds. Yeah, I'd rather do that than, you know, chores around the house. So no, I, yeah, I get a little excited. I do the same. Well, been a busy week for um, me. I don't know about you guys. Do you guys do anything special this week? I did a bunch of stuff. I want to. I want to hear what you did. What did you do? Well, I, uh, you know, I, I've got this L thirty nine turbine project that I inherited, kind of somewhat after the F fifteen thing. I decided to jump into another turbine. Uh, you, anyway, you had, wait, 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 some you're judgment. You're saying that with saying. lack of enthusiasm, like it's the L thirty nine. Yeah, it's like I said, it's a lack of judgment. He, <laughs> okay, well, well, it was under know. the influence. I know, right? I can't get the too gas excited. line broke in the house, and he got a little, you know, tipsy. Didn't know what he was doing. <laughs> he left his <laughs> left the plane there. I know. <laughs> it was yeah. That's what I told everybody. Anyway, it just showed up here. <laughs> hmm. No, it, uh, you know, whoever had it before, um, obviously these jets get passed around a couple of times. I think I'm probably this third or fourth owner, maybe. Uh, anyway, it's been, let me say, a hard landing previous to me. Ish. And yeah, it was a hard ish landing. <laughs> Pretty much ripped the gear right out of the airplane. Uh, so they did a repair, and um, I, I'm not going to throw anybody in the bus because I don't really know who did the repair. Uh, but the repair was not to m- my standards, basically. You know who you are. Definitely. <laughs> That's right, <laughs> yeah. if you're listening. Yeah, you we know, know who, who you are. are. You, you know uh, who you are. And and definitely not to Spencer's uh, standards. Matter of fact, Spencer took one look at it, and he just kind of shuddered and walked away. And I knew that that was my cue to rip the landing gear and the, and the landing gear mounts out and start over. <laughs> So he didn't really even say, have to say anything. He just kind of he looked at it and went, "Hmm." <laughs> I was like, "Oh, great!" So, Mike, so, when you say rip out the gear, it's not like you know. Once again, I, I since I've never worked on something like this, it's not like working in foam. You just rip it out. I mean, it's all epoxied in and this is correct. with like not just basswood, but like you know, two by fours. So <laughs> you know, I'm thinking you need some real tools, or yeah. you, you got to router that out, or I don't know. Yeah, luckily, so uh, yeah, Jay, it was interesting. Luckily, he has skill sets ver- fit to this very purpose. I do. Oh. Yeah. Destruction. Yeah. Yes, I, I can <laughs> destruct with the best of them. Uh-huh. Okay. So, interesting enough, I, I learned a couple things actually. Uh, I will pass along. So, uh, this week, you know, Spencer got his big, um, you know, one sixth scale F 16, and the guy that owned it before had reinforced it with carbon fiber. So he'd taken the carbon fiber and wrapped it around one of the intakes and then just lacquered it up with epoxy. Now, I, I've worked with epoxy. I mean, Jay, you know that I don't, I don't react well to epoxy, so I try to stay away from it. I use mostly uh, water-based type glues or, you know, not the solvent type stuff because I kind of blow up like a balloon. puff up a little bit. Mm-hmm. I do puff up a little bit. Uh, but anyway, I learned something new is that epoxy to me – uh, when you put epoxy on, it's pretty much done. I mean, wouldn't you say? Have you ever un unepoxied stuff? I'm like you can put, <laughs> you know, uh, <laughs> right? I mean, you can put like I know you can put like debonder on CA and pull it apart. Right, there is know, no, kind of there is no epoxy debonder. Yeah, there right. is. Right, it's not yeah, like you is, can just. It's called gravity. <laughs> it's called it's called bad piloting skills. That's usually what does the disassembly. Hey now. Uh so okay, so anyway, my landing gear to go back to what Spencer uh and I were doing, the landing gear had car somebody had put carbon fiber over the you know, the pieces that were broke. So it busted out the pieces. The landing gear is fairly large because it's a one fifth scale. So uh the landing gear is about the size of your forearm and um you know, it's pretty big. <laughs> 
I know, right? And so Especially when it, you're looking at my it, guns, there, that's it, huge. It is huge. <laughs> so it fits in between these two wooden plates, and then usually on the wooden plates they have a carbon fiber set that goes on the top, and uh, and then that's what gives it the strength. Well, they busted those out, and then they took all the pieces and they put them all back in, and then they epoxied them in, basically. And then to hold them together, they put carbon fiber around it. So back to what I was talking about, Spencer, that this guy had wrapped uh, this big carbon fiber. And it's a sheet. It comes a, uh, Carbon fiber comes as a fabric uh, in a little fabric sheet. And you wrap it around there, and then he epoxied it on there. So anyway, Spencer was not happy with that because it, A, didn't look very good. And B, it makes, uh, believe it or not, carbon fiber does have weight to it. Uh, especially if you use a lot of it. And this guy had wrapped it around like an ace bandage, you know, a couple times. <laughs> couple times. <laughs> and Spencer wanted it out of there because he uses carbon toe, which is incredibly strong, but, you know, doesn't add any, it adds weight, but not much, just, you know, a couple ounces. So wait, I'm over wait, there wait, once again. Carbon toe? <clears throat> yeah, yeah, I'll get to that. Okay. Uh, so I, I mentioned on the last podcast that I have been around these master builders. And, and I will tell you that my, my building techniques I thought were halfway decent until I got around guys that are in the, you know, this larger scale master's class, um, you, you know, top gun winners, that, you know, that kind of thing. These guys manufacture miniature things that are just amazing. You know, they've got lathes and lasers and all kinds of stuff. So anyway, I'm looking at this project that Spencer brought in, and I said, oh, man, that kind of stinks. You're going to have to buy a new intake. And he goes, what, are you kidding me? No, we're going to take this carbon fiber off. And I I got to look like Jay. I went, wait, what? <laughs> it's epoxied on. Thing? <laughs> it's epoxied on. I mean, this guy's, you know, it's a carbon fiber thing. And, and uh, one of the other guys was over there, uh, Wayne, and uh, he's, you know, master builder too. And so he and he and Spencer laughed. And I was like, okay, I got to see this, you know, because I've, I, I don't, I don't know. I mean, I, this is something that's new to me. I don't really deal with composites like these guys do. Sure enough, they come walking in there with this big F-16 and some channel locks, uh, big, long uh, needle nose pliers and a heat gun. And one of them held the heat gun about, you know, half inch from the carbon fiber and just held it there for a second. And then the other guy grabbed it with the, with the uh, big needle nose pliers and the channel locks and about 30 seconds to maybe 45 seconds, ripped the carbon completely off. Really? So epoxy is, is heat. That's how it dries, right? It heats up. So it, when it cooks off, oh, yeah, it has a, you mix it up. And then it gets reaction. Yeah, it's it's a reaction, correct. Well, you can reverse that reaction with heat. So when Spencer did this, I was like, "No way! I have never seen that happen before." So when it was time for mine, I you know we're looking in there, and he goes, "Yeah, you're gonna have to redo all that stuff. So just go ahead and rip it all out." So I got the heat gun, stuck it in the wheel well, heated it up a little bit. Although there's a little bit of uh, caution, you can't just stick the heat gun in your wheel well; it will melt the paint on the other side of the wing. <laughs> <laughs> Don't ask me how I know that. And then, you know, it softens up the uh, carbon fiber and whoosh, carbon fiber came off, heated up the epoxy stuff. It got soft, took some channel locks, popped it right out. And next thing you know, I have a clean wheel well that uh, is all cleaned up. Um, I had to take a little Dremel tool and Dremel out some of the, um, uh, the, the remaining epoxy that didn't come out. Uh, there was some... Uh, some high sol in there, which is a aircraft grade epoxy that they use for you know re, uh, full size, full scale stuff that we use in models, uh, and and they have these little diamond wheel kind of abrasive, coarse, real coarse uh, tips that go on the end of a uh, your Dremel tool, and I stuck it in there, and zzz, 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 you know I was able to draw a line, and the wood that was in there, I just cleaned up around the wood, and now made it exactly like it was when it came from the factory. So now I have the structure inside there, the little brackets that hold everything, and now I have to make the actual piece of wood that goes back in that holds the landing gear, the actual landing gear tray. So I, you know, took the old stuff and I kind of traced it out, <clears throat> and I cut a piece that was a little bit larger, 
And then with a little sanding and a little uh, bandsaw and a couple of uh, markers, I got it to where it slides right in. And then I slid the other side in, and now it's a perfect fit. Uh, and the good news is when the gear retracts, the landing gear door can actually close because now the gear sits completely inside the airplane where before uh, it actually sat outside the airplane because they built up the, the, oh, the stock the landing gear thing. And damage, so now yeah. it's it's taller and they had to remove the gears to get the thing to actually sit, you know, to because uh, the gear didn't retract all the way. It didn't lay inside the body like it's supposed to. It was actually protruding a little bit from the from the body itself. Anyway, it was a very interesting lesson. I learned a lot, and I'll pass that along to you. So well, um, I just want to say that uh, I didn't notice any stopping for a safety moment, so that's good. Uh, I assume <laughs> I assume you have all your fingers uh, after using the bandsaw because uh, a bandsaw could uh, take or, your finger off. Or the smoke off. detector didn't go off with from the uh, heat gun. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, so. I did not. Um, <clears throat> I didn't get any blisters. I will tell you that uh, I did run a piece of carbon fiber right into my finger. Uh, you, oh. you, you can't okay. see it. Um, yeah, you, you had to ruin I'm it. I'm showing I it to these guys, story. but if you're listening to this, you can't see it. I had a good it, so. story, and then you come and do that <laughs> stuff. I don't, I don't know, Mike. I don't it know. was really tiny, though. It okay. wasn't really. Uh, like oh, you know what? Actually, it was more. I know, but Did I mean, it, it wasn't like nail? it was a, Cause that, that's a, I No, it didn't that. go through the nail, just right beside it. No, no, just under the nail. You know. Oh, just, yeah, if it goes under the nail. Where it gets nail, stuck in a position crying. where you can't really get it out. You can't really see it because it's too small. Oh, man. It's like, oh. Right. Oof, that's the worst. That's I'm already getting the cringes from that. You know? I know, right? Oh. That's terrible. Hey, so, so uh, AZ yeah, Mike. So anyway, now uh, my landing gear is perfect. So that's AZ awesome. Mike, so yeah. from what I'm gathering, you live in the perfect place for this type of operation. What do you mean? So all you had to do was just push the plane outside because what is it, 114, 120? <laughs> yeah. Put it outside mm. for while you're doing whatever inside. Come back after half an hour, hour. Pull the plane in, just rip all the stuff off that you want ripped off. You know what's mm. you know what's also yeah. cool about that, Jay? Is you have a pan of biscuits too at the same time. <laughs> you, can <cook laughs> a, you can cook a cake out there if you wanted to. So you can have you can you can work on your plane and have a snack. Hmm. Uh, unfortunately, uh, 120 is not going to do it. Uh, you have to get the, I mean, the heat gun cranks up, you know, to 850 degrees or whatever it does. I mean, it's, it's pretty hot. It's hot enough that you can't touch the carbon fiber. That's why they had all the tools. But you can still use the heat gun you don't to make the grab biscuits, that right? You could if you wanted <laughs> okay. to. Okay. All right. I just, I just don't want to go hungry well, just set here. those outside. <laughs> yeah. Just set the biscuits outside while you're working with the heat gun, but... Yeah, you definitely want to do that early in the morning or, or late in the evening because uh, doing it in the middle of the day with the heat gun, you're pretty much cooking yourself. But So anyway, I, I, I redid the landing gear on the L39. Uh, so it's not mounted yet, but I remounted the two pieces of wood that are in there, and now the landing gear sits nice. Uh, I do have some new landing gear doors coming from Skymaster, so that's exciting. Uh, they should be here in a couple weeks, so we'll be able to mount those. Um and get them to open and close uh, correctly. And then uh, the other thing I did for the first time was mount a canopy. I've never done that before either. How so that was that different than whatever you've done before? I mean, what was special uh, about it? Well, so the canopy itself, now I've, I've made, you know, little plastic canopies, like to fold it over or whatever. I've never formed anything like some guys out there I know can they have a forming table where they can take a piece of Lexan and then put it over a, a wood block and you know it basically heats it up and stretches it and then they've got this actual canopy. I've never really done that. I've had canopies that you know I had to install on airplanes, but this one actually came as a canopy frame and it came as uh, a piece of Lexan that was already formed. So now the two of them have to be you have to cut the one to match the other. Well, the canopy frame for this L39, because it's one-fifth scale, is once again the size of your forearm. You know, it's the length of your forearm and probably uh, about six inches, you know, tall. So it's it's fairly large. But it's a floppy jalopy. The thing is made so thin that if you held it up, it's like a piece of wet noodle. And it has no strength to it. So the carbon... Um, weave you've seen carbon weave right mike it's got the over under over under yeah if you were to pull it looks like fiberglass almost even yes it does but 
the carbon fiber has a little bit bigger, right? Right. Um, you can buy them in bigger squares. If you pulled one of those weaves out all the way to the very end, you basically have a ribbon of little carbon fiber strands. Sure. Okay. Then if you had 30 feet of that, that's called carbon tow. T-O-W. Uh, okay. Not T-O-E. T-O-W. I thought it was like tow of so it your comes foot, a- and I was like, what? I <laughs> no. I don't get it. T-O-W. So, so what happens is that, uh, once again, you know, these guys, Spencer built this little machine, and you basically put the spool on one end, and then you loop it around like a sewing machine, and then it goes to this other end, and, and basically you clamp it, pull it, it goes off the spool into epoxy, comes out, squeezes the epoxy out, goes out the other side of this little mechanism, and then it spins on the side of a drill to make a rope. So it's a twisted, and it, it makes like a cord. But this thing has got like just a barely barely enough epoxy to get just the fibers wet. So then he, he takes three of these and then twists them together like a, like a hemp rope, right? And then they're really tiny. I mean, they're, they're about the size of maybe a number two pencil lead. And so, but it's, you know, six inches long. He, he cuts it and then he lays it on the inside of the, the canopy frame on the edge. So he'll start in one corner, go down the canopy rail, go up over the little half circle and then down the canopy rail, up over the half circle and meet it again. Okay. So that's one piece. And that becomes the black black part that you see on the canopy, right? Is that what you're saying? uh, Inside, there's a little, just the, it's a corner. Because then you take it and you mash it into the corner so that it's, the rope is actually kind of flattening out. Uh And now it's kind of shoved into the corner. Hmm. When that stuff dries, you can almost stand on it. I mean, it is so strong, just that little bitty piece. So he uses that. Uh, to wrap around the F-16 intake, and he got rid of the whole carbon fiber, you know, block, and just wrapped this carbon <laughs> toe. She- I think I think the the term is sheet. <laughs> okay, sheet. Yeah. Uh, well, this was multiple sheets, and so uh, on his F-16 intake, he just wrapped it around a couple of times, made it like a little lattice work, and then now this thing is incredibly strong, and it gives just a little bit of weight compared to having the whole carbon fiber piece uh, of fabric. So we did that to the canopy frame, and now the canopy frame is really rigid. Well, it still has a little bit of a twist to it, but once you put the the plexiglass or this, um, it's not really plexiglass, it's uh, Lexan. Once you put the Lexan in, the thing becomes like a rock. Once again, you can almost stand on the canopy. It's very strong, and you know it. It's crazy how you know, how strong this thing becomes. But now you have to glue the Lexan inside the canopy frame. So they sell a special canopy glue. It's a, it's a Zap product. You know, I like Zap glue. I've started using that. And then um, you put that in there. It's white, <clears throat> and uh, it dries clear when it dries. So then you can uh, put a little bead on the inside of the canopy rail where that carbon toe is, and then the, you cut the uh, Lexan to sit right on top or right underneath that carbon toe, and then uh, you clamp it all the way around, and then on the top I use magnets, these really heavy magnets that slam together, and it holds the canopy into the rail and glues it. So now I have a canopy that uh, is clear and um, ready for the pilot so you can see through it. Anyway, it was interesting, uh, you know, to be... I did it on my own. Uh, Spencer kind of walked me through it, and then I brought it all home and, and tried it myself. So it seems to work. Maybe you can um, take a picture or two and put that on the Facebook page? I will, yeah. I'll take yeah, a photo. that's a good idea. Okay, cool. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's neat. Yeah, we can do that. But that was my, uh, that was my uh, airplane stuff, and then uh, I was working on the trailer as well. So I got a couple of the walls put in uh, and a couple of the rails uh, so far. So I'll, well, I'll throw up, some. So, I'll throw some pictures. So up. for the uh, for just tell the, the the listeners like what all you're doing with your trailer and where you're at and what you had done. Uh, so the trailer was a. Um, it's kind of a. It's it's technically it's a seven by seven by twelve, but they sell it as like a eight by eight by twelve. Because I think the outside is eight by eight, and then it's twelve foot long, and so it's a tall trailer, and uh, it. Uh, you know, it kind of was a work trailer for a while. So anyway, I ripped all the walls out of the inside of it. And then I took, um, 
the uh, foil sided foam and I basically cut it and insulated the whole inside, top, bottom, sides, you name it. It's all been insulated. And, and once then again, t- uh, being a guy from Alaska, the only time you insulate something is if you want to stay warm. And being that you're in Arizona. I want to stay cool. Be, you want to stay cool. Okay. Right. Right. I, it's not that you stay warm or cool. It still gets hot in there. But what happens is that the temperature stays more consistent. Right. Because you have a reflectivity uh, on the outside of the trailer. I mean, if you set, if you walked into the trailer and you stuck your hand on the side of it, it's incredibly hot because it's aluminum and the aluminum heats up in the summer heat. So what happens is you put this this uh, foam insulation that you can buy at Home Depot. Uh, I think that runs eight or eight or nine dollars a sheet. Um, and then basically it creates an air. Uh, it doesn't go all. It goes to the wall, but there's a little air between the the wall and the foam. And then you have foam and then a, a silver reflectivity on the inside. Uh, and then I have tape, uh, re- reflective tape that holds it all in. And then I put whiteboard, the stuff, the, I call it whiteboard, but it's actually, what I tell you it was, Jay, you can write on it and erase, dry erase board. So it's the right. white dry erase board. And then I take those and I put them, you know, in there. And then uh, they sell this really cool colored electrical tape i'd bought some white and then i put it down the seams where they match and then now you have a white trailer inside i have some e-track that i put vertical e-track and then i can have shelving in there uh, that i can adjust so i'll have three shelves and uh and then a little workspace uh in front of the shelves and that way i can fit two of the turbine i can put four turbines in there basically and then all my foam airplanes and make one trip to the field instead of dragging only one or two airplanes out on the floor of the trailer. <clears throat> so that's what I was in the process of doing. And once again, go to our Park Flyer Podcast listeners group Facebook page, and uh, you can kind of see what the the trailer project looks like. Well, I know Jay was trying so to do something too, but his trailer yeah, yeah, yeah. was a little well, bit different uh, than mine. A little bit different, and uh, I'm still... Uh, a little bit behind you in the fact that I'm still deconstructing mine because yeah. it's put together a little weird. So, well, oh. mine actually because it's so large, uh, the deconstruction phase was fairly easy because I just pulled all the wood off, and there's nothing behind the wood. Uh, the other thing that I did was I upgraded all my um, marker lights to LEDs, so those are all new LED lights in there. Um. Which makes it really cool too. Excellent. So they're much yeah. brighter. So how how much longer do you think you're gonna it's gonna take you to actually finish this thing up? Um well the next phase I, I was able to you know, these sheets come as uh, forty eight feet wide and uh, or, or I'm sorry, four foot wide and eight foot long. I had to cut them on the eight foot se- or on the four foot section so they, they're shorter. And then um I could only put two in, and then now I have to rip one the long way to go th- where the door is and where the in front of the trailer is. And so um, I have to wait until I get back. I don't have a table saw, so I have to wait till I get to Spencer's to do a table saw thing. And So it was probably going to be hmm, probably another couple of weeks before I get all of the walls and the E-tracks and all that stuff in there. Uh, once I do all that, I do have a floor, a vinyl floor that I'm going to put in. And then um, I've got some LED lights that are going to go up in the ceiling uh, along the so, way. So, so why, why are you going to put vinyl floor on there? I mean, is that just to make it so it's easier to slide stuff on or you don't get splinters or what's the reason? Well, there's a wood floor in there right now. And I think just to kind of finish it off, make it look nice. Um, it does have there. It's a, you know what a coin vinyl is? You ever heard of that? No. It's a gray vinyl that has uh, about a quarter size bump on it. And they're all lined up like quarters laying on the floor. Oh, yeah. I know what you're talking about. Mine, mine is a dime size. Spencer's is a, a quarter size. But mine is a dime size because I wanted more traction on mine. And that way I can sweep it out a little bit better. But um, it just makes it a non-skid, anti-slip type floor. Things don't yeah, slide totally around makes sense. on it as much. Yeah, that totally makes sense. Yeah. So, so you, and it's you easy to clean because I can just sweep it out. Yeah, so you said you used whiteboard. 
Is that because you want to put like this is my uh, pits and this is my EDF and this is? I mean, what? Hey, what that's you, right. So yeah. we, well, next time we come down, we can all draw a little thing like I was here. <laughs> yeah. and uh, Mike yeah, was here. Or a little, little Mike was catch here. phrases and yeah. stuff in there. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Uh, we, no, the the reason I just use whiteboard is um, most of us down here, it, it's inexpensive, you know, compared to some of the other mediums. Uh, you could use wood. Uh, but then you got a wood. This this makes it look like an actual room. You know, it's got it's white. You know, I mean, I, you don't have to. I'm not going to write on it, but it it's it's real <laughs> shiny, slippery. If something gets on it, you can just wipe it off. It just makes it clean. And I'm you know constantly uh, hanging around those. CD really, what I thought you were going to do so is you're going to do like thing. a measurement so that you show how tall you get over the years, or or in this case, you're going to start shrinking. Uh, yeah, I guess. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, I just measure my airplane to see how big it gets. And when it gets That's too right. big, yeah, there you go. Trailer, uh, oh, oh yeah, this is my six foot wing. Okay, yeah, I'll put that over here. Yeah. <laughs> well, the funny part is, is I um I ran over yesterday to pick up my uh, L thirty nine from Spencer's, and we had been working on it. And he was, I was in a hurry, you know, because we were on the way somewhere. And so I just grabbed it, wings and all. I never took the wings off, so I just walked the whole airplane into the trailer. And my wife was with me, and she's standing at the back of the trailer, and she goes, you know that thing takes up the entire trailer, right? So the wingtip was exactly almost seven feet across, and the airplane was almost the length of the trailer short by about four feet. So <laughs> it's almost it's almost 10 feet long and seven feet wide, you know? I mean, it, it's it's a pretty large airplane. And anyway, with the wings and everything on inside the trailer, it was literally the only thing that could fit in there. So, Well, yeah, honey, uh, that's why I have three levels to my trailer. Hello. Right. That's exactly <laughs> what I told her. I was like, well, that, that's not a problem because I'm going to put three shelves in here. <laughs> anyway, it was funny. She just shook her head. She was like, huh. Because <laughs> she knows Mike, I just want to say this there. on the air. She loves you. She does. She I have the most you. supportive wife. Yeah. She's a listener, so just, honey, I love you. Thank you very much uh, for that's supporting That's not a suck-up either. My... I know she does. No, no. Hey, speaking of uh, airplanes, since you had to drive uh, down to Spencer's, uh, did you stop by, uh, what was it, uh, Grey, uh, not Greyhound, uh, yeah, Greyhound. Oh, yeah. Find out about your plane. What's going on with that saga? Uh, uh, you had to bring that up, didn't you? Of course I did. Yeah. <laughs> Well, so I had a A4. It was a That was supposed to be your first that was supposed to be your first uh, uh It was supposed to be guy, the right? first turbine, but um Spencer and I were going to build one together and uh, he promptly sold his like 2 days after we got yeah, it. Yeah, 2 days. I was going to say like a day or and two I'm after like, you got back the from the jet you know, festival. He's right? like, "Well, I am not really an A4 guy and I wound up getting an F18, so I want that." And I was like, "Okay, well, I got to get rid of my A4." So I've been trying to sell that thing forever and finally someone express some interest in it well it's large too right and um it's still in the box and so i boxed it all up and i had a buyer and and the guy you know basically most people ship their big jets because it's almost 76 inches long so most everybody ships it via greyhound so i was nice enough to you know just run down to my nearest greyhound put it on the the bus and told the guy hey be there in a week yeah, because he lives, like, down the road from me. Yeah, he did. Yeah, he does. So, anyway, yeah, it's been, like, three weeks, and we haven't heard anything um, from Greyhound. Uh, the last we Crickets. know, it was in Vegas. We're not really sure where it left Vegas. So oh, yeah. Uh, Vegas is directly in line with uh, Arizona <laughs> to uh, exactly. Texas. Yeah, it's a direct Vegas. link. Mm -hmm. ABC so, News So, yeah, I'm not really sure where it went. That this uh, A A4 airplane is out partying with the rest of the planes. That's right. <laughs> well, that was where the Navy got in trouble, wasn't it, in Vegas? <laughs> you know, yeah. Yeah. Did I say that on the air? Sorry about uh, that, guys. I don't know. We appreciate your service. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, so we're not really, we're not really sure. I've put a couple of calls in, and, I, you know, unfortunately I'm frustrated. He's frustrated because he wanted to come. He, wanted, he was going to drive out here and pick it up and visit the Pima Air Museum, and uh, his name is Ed, and, um, man, I feel bad. I really do. But I will tell you that from here on out, there is a company called U-Ship, the U, letter U, and a ship. And um, they've got a website that puts you in, in basically in touch with the uh, truckers, uh, transportation people who have empty space in their trucks and are having to relocate you know, from one spot to another. So basically, if somebody's going from Arizona to Texas, I can call them and say, hey, if you've got uh, room on your truck, you know, 
they'll charge me X amount of dollars and I can throw it on the truck and then they'll del- deliver it when they get down there. They'll call the recipient and say, okay, I got something on my truck that belongs to you. So if you want to meet me here, and evidently it uh, gets done because you're dealing with an individual, uh, not a corporation, and uh, evidently it gets that's the new thing as opposed to Greyhound because even Spencer has some nightmarish stuff uh, about his planes going all over the country. <laughs> hey, hey, AK Mike, didn't you? Isn't that how you moved from Alaska down here? What a Greyhound? Greyhound? No, 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 no. On like a U ship or. Oh, it, it kind of was like the, that. The um, they put my stuff on a pallet, and then they just put it on. You know, they it sits in it sits in their warehouse until their truck fills up, and then they basically it's a consolidator. Yeah. Is what they are. Yeah, that's a, I think that's what U ship is too, a consolidator. But no. but it seems like U ship right, so, is doing it in a little more organized fashion in terms of in terms of like keeping in touch with people and letting you talk to them directly. Uh, so, yeah, I think so. It's not like, like you drop it off at some place. Right. I think you, I, I'm not really sure how it works cause I haven't used it, but I, I did get a bunch of comments cause you know, I made some, I made some distressful or stressful, you know, comments on RC groups that were kind of like, Oh my gosh, you know, and people are like, yeah, you should use you ship. It's much better. So we'll, we'll probably do that in the future. Well, in the meantime, you, you went downtown. Uh, so did you finally find this lady who, you know, won't return your phone calls or? Uh, I went down and talked to a lady. It wasn't the lady I was dealing with, but uh, I have to go back down there and talk to her. So I was supposed to do that today, and I wound up uh, going, working on the trailer instead. So <laughs> I did. Oh, okay. Don't tell Ed that, but yeah, anyway. Oh, I thought I thought you went and talked to her today. That's why. No, unfortunately, I didn't get to. So it was super hot. But so anyway, that was my whole saga for the week. I mean. Who would have thought? So, exactly. Yeah. I learned. I learned some new skills, so that was good news. I'm always looking right. to add new skills to my uh, repertoire of building, and um, I learned that uh, you can get epoxy. Not really epoxy. You can't melt the epoxy, but it'll soften. So, oh. now I will tell you that if you did a super good job and did it correctly, it wouldn't come off as easy. I think these guys used five minute epoxy on it, but. Thank goodness. If you use, you know, five or 30 minute epoxy, I think you're going to have a little bit harder time getting it off. But, um, but, you know, if you use that 30 minute, or if you use something that was supposed to use, then, you know, like a, ra- a resin or whatever, then you would do it correctly as opposed to just laying it on there and slapping some five minute epoxy on it. So, yeah. Oh, cool, cool, cool. Yeah, it's pretty neat. So, so AK, okay, Mike, you, you were working on a couple of projects. Uh, I think from when you were down here visiting me, I think you finally finished one of them. Yeah, so right. when, when I was uh, visiting Jay, uh, I had a problem with one of my escapes on my uh, big wing. And uh, it's basically my tough wing. And uh, so we put <laughs> – we wanted to fly it really badly. So we put a 40-amp escape I had in it. Uh, and I was like, Jay, I, I don't think this is going to work. He's like, it'll be fine. You know, they, they got some leeway. <laughs> Leave it to Jay. It'll be okay. <laughs> it'll be okay. And I was like, I don't know. So I put my watt meter on it just for fun. And I was like, I ran it up. It was like 60 amps. Uh, of course. Not even run up the whole way, right? And so It was like, 50 amps, not 60. It, it was 60 <laughs> amps uh, when you hit the top a couple times. Anyway. So we're like, eh, you know, I just won't run it full throttle. It's fine. I, and, I, and I can run my stuff half throttle. That works okay. And I, and I was able to. The thing that we didn't really count on um, was that it overheated even at half throttle. Um, and so it shut down. It basically stopped flying. Um, and mm. uh, I was like, oh, that's not good because I lost, I think, what, twice flying it that day, Jay? Yeah, we were in front of, so anyway, it, it went to thermal. It's thermal protection, and, and we never, yeah, we ne- yeah, I'm thermal protection, kicked in, but we never lost it. Uh, it was, oh, it always landed where. Well, luckily, one was right next to the fence, so I could reach under the fence and grab it, and pull it back. It was, it was a yeah. barbed wire fence, so it wasn't like a, you know, really dense fencing. It was just really open, and I was able to get my arm in there. And then the other no time, llama was attack. Middle, was in the well, the fence the that you, the fence that you stuck your arm under, is where all the llamas are. Oh, uh, no. That's why, they had, case, that's why it's a barbed wire fence. No, no. In this case, the llamas weren't anywhere near there. They were. Yeah, oh, they were okay. there. So that that's why I said no, no, was, llama, no llama attacks. Oh, no llama attacks. Yeah, yeah, I couldn't. I no couldn't no, no llamas came over and spit in his face. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't spit in your face. Hey, I've actually had that happen to me before when I was a kid. Did you? That's gross. I was at the zoo. 
Yeah, I was at the zoo and I was making noises at the llama and they spit on me. So yeah, I, I was, it was so gross. <laughs> you, you probably deserve that. Yeah. Uh, I did. What'd your old man say? Well, that's what you get. He laughed. He laughed. <laughs> my mom was mortified, but you know, he so, laughed. So oh I, was, I put the 60 amp in there and uh, it reminded me that I don't do that very often because it took me way longer than it should have to, to solder that thing back To put on the there. ESC in? To put my 60 Why amp, that? put the ends on there. Uh, mostly because I don't do it often enough, and I don't have you know this uh, like muscle memory for it. Um, I've done a bunch, huh. and so it's just like struggling. It's like, oh yeah, I gotta tin it first. Oh yeah, I gotta put some more solder in there first. Oh yeah, I gotta it's just stuff I just know how to do, but you know it's not part of my. You just haven't done it in a while. Yeah, it's not habit. wasn't habit formed in terms of doing it. So I struggled with it for a little bit, and uh, finally by the last. Uh, barrel connector i was like i got this oh that was the last one oh, okay great <laughs> yeah. so um, well there's some there's actually a positive to take away from that what's that in the fact that the reason that we were soldering in the very beginning so often is because our products were not lasting very long right that's true i mean we crashed a lot of airplanes early on and you were having to you know put new parts on it and escs were one of the well, ones your jay, parts. So you we, got jay and i found out this particular problem was actually me having crashed it a couple times the capacitors basically ripped out of the unit so they would work right. for part of the time but then if it got heated up or whatever and it would stop working and so it was failing yeah go figure yeah well th i'm just saying that now you're you're not crashing things as much, so you're probably not soldering as eh, much as true. you were if you that's were true. back you know back when when you were having to fix everything. Yeah, every time true. you went and flew, yeah. now you can go several it was every time know, too. months without. I know, right? <laughs> I, I had those days in the early in the early years. <laughs> sure. So so yeah, as you say, the upside is that uh, that it does, I don't have to do it very often, so that's why I don't remember. Uh, let's see what else. Right. Well, I know uh, something else about what I was just saying. I know something else about that story, and that was that you didn't call uh, AZ Mike or myself for any advice. That's well, true. Or help. I just you did it all, it all I, by I just yourself. recalled. I just recalled the advice that you gave me after I did it the first time. After I did it the first time. <laughs> after the fact, <laughs> you're like, oh yeah, you're supposed to put this. Oh yeah, I remember after barrel. I did this the first time, they said these things, and I, right, so I exactly. just I just had the same conversation, but without you guys. That's all. Uh, actually, you, you know, the, you that's go. good, though, because I just got a text, actually, uh, on your painting. And you, you finished up some of the painting as well without our help. Uh, that's true. Well, I, I guess now that you now that we told you the other side, right, you went and yeah, did some more stuff. Well, although although I, you know, I, I'd hoped for more success and I was I felt like I was, you know, very careful about what I was doing. But I still got paint on the unpainted portions. Uh, you guys can't right. see it, but um I can show you uh, when I painted the blue on the middle part where the engines are. Uh, the listeners can't see it, but you'll see that there's some blue on the very front of the gold here. Right. Oh, it, how'd you do that? Yeah, uh, just because that? the pieces of paper I had weren't covering it quite enough. I, I had a piece of paper oh, sticking oh, okay, out, and okay. but I'm just going to call it weathering and leave it there and. Uh, it's, <laughs> blue it's, weathering. It's consistent blue across weathering. both of them. I so flew through some blue sky and got it's blue like I, weathering on it. Like I did it on purpose, you know. So I'm just going to leave it like right. that. I go. think so instead of painting, just over fly it. faster. Cool. Every time you come fly past faster, the audience yeah. or people, just fly faster. In the no, zoom what in what it is is that there's blue. It's blue. It was old, the old paint was blue, and now that I put the gold over it, but because of the weathering, it's blue underneath again. You see, that's how oh, weathering works. There you go. That's smart. So anyway. Uh, so I finished uh, that part of the tail. I, I haven't decided yet uh, because, you know, you talked about the tape sticking to the paint and stuff. I haven't decided mm -hmm. if I'm going to try to paint three colors on the tail because that's a lot of work. I mean, it's a lot of work. Um, yes, we know. <laughs> yeah, so so I could do two <laughs> colors and it would be less work. Um, I think it will that's be true. less work too if I... Um, if I'm careful, I can put the tape really close to the blue edge, not on it, and like have the paper touch uh, uh, level with the blue edge, and then tape it down right. with uh, only a like a eighth of an inch of tape sticking out of the paper, mm -hmm. and then that way it just stays. It gives me a eighth inch gap between the colors, so I can put right, and you can stick it, some tapes, some tape in between. Them. Yeah, put some tape there, 
uh, but I have to cover the original part that I painted already. So either I can use those Fisker uh, plastic things. That, what Fris- are they called? Frisket. Yeah, frisk. Frisket film. Frisk, yeah. Frisk and I can piece. cut some designs out that way, and that's some work too because you got to cut it out and you want to make it consistent. Sure. So you got to cut them both at the same time, or you got to—I don't know. It's it's just a lot of work. So I haven't decided yet if I'm going to wow. do that, but I, I probably will. But I, you know, it's just like, oh, that's <laughs> so well, painful. Dude, don't, don't, once again, let's not get stressed out about this. Just, just do one just or two colors and just kind of follow that theme that you have right now. Yeah. And if you just, or if you paint three colors like you have back there, just yeah. break them out over the plane where you're just painting once and the, and they're not overlapping. And it, it'll still look good. No, I know. Or, I'm not you trying know, to get th- it to this overlap. Is a good, this is a good. Well, this is a good segue for this. Fr- this is a good segue for the frisket film. Okay, because you can buy frisket film in multiple mills. You can buy a two mill, five mill, six mill, ten mill, twenty mill, um, and and so you know they come in different. Most of, most of the ones that they sell are are either a five mill, seven mill, or ten mill, which is the thickness. And if you get the really light stuff, it's not. You can use a pair of scissors and just cut your you know. You can actually draw something because it's clear. You can lay it down on your airplane. You can draw what you want, cut it out, and cut out in the middle of the frisket film with an X-Acto knife. That way you can lay the whole frisket film over all of the paint and just paint that little negative in there. And you can actually paint right on the paint, close to the paint, you know, close to your line, make a line, not make a line, doesn't matter. Um, But it's, you know, it works really well, and if you're – camouflaging or, or putting stripes or whatever, you know, that it, it does work really well. Um, and it does keep the paint, you know, cause you're not like yeah. really heavily spraying it. You're just spraying it real light. Right. Uh, unfortunately for me, I, 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 uh, put the stabilizer on there before I really finished the tail. I should have done that. I, cause I didn't think I was going to paint it at the time I did that. And then I was like, Oh, you know what? I should paint this thing. And so, now the stabilizer's in in the tail section, which makes it a lot more, another more work because you got to cut around that stuff and uh, yeah. flop it in there. Well, you know they paint real airplanes with all that stuff still together too. So, <laughs> the, but they what know what they're the doing. Yeah. This is true, <laughs> and they're using lasers. So that's right, exactly. So anyway, um, so I finished some more of that, and it's it's really coming together uh, pretty nice. Um, you know, it's not going to be the best plane ever. Uh, painting it's not going to win any prizes at all i guarantee um but you know it's my first go at it and it's been interesting to try stuff out like i should have painted it before i put the motors in i should have done you know there's a bunch of stuff i could have should have done but um, yeah sure well the good news is that you decided to tackle this which is you know kudos to you i i there's a you know big respect going out because a lot of people just wouldn't do it, and you know this is something new that you haven't done before, and you've kind of stretched your limit and said you know this is something you weren't comfortable with, but now you're starting to kind of see it. You make mistakes. Trust me, er- in the early years of doing all this, I made a ton of mistakes, um, but over time, <laughs> Jay too, he's pointing all his in the back. But over time, it gets easier and easier because you understand and talking to us, you know, or or um, you know, picking our brains for ideas. Uh, even though sometimes it's after the fact, you know, where we go, why'd you do that? You should have done this and this. And you're like, oh man, why didn't you tell me that before? Well, it's because I'm not standing there. You know, you're doing it on your own, and we're kind of letting you figure it out because it's more of a you know bigger impression when you make the mistake and then go, well, how do I fix this? Negative reinforcement. Make sure remember, <laughs> Jay's good at it. One one cool thing that came out of this um, when I I don't know if I if I put pictures out of the of the red and gold the front part of the cowl or the nacelles has gold, but uh, when I did it one of the sides had a gap and the other side didn't and I was like oh man uh, I could have you know I did one side like really awesome it looked great it was all matched up and everything and the other side had this big old gap so I was like what am I gonna do and I just decided. I was going to take the accent color, which is blue in this case, and I just put a pinstripe of blue around it to cover up the gap. And it looks like I did it on purpose. Smart, uh, everybody, Smart dude. No, yeah, that was looks good. Like that's that. great. That's yeah, excellent. It's, it's, so that's kind of cool, and that, and that worked out nicely. And then I thought, well, I can fix some of these things with a brush. And I thought, nah, if I do that, it's going to end up being look like a brush mark. So I can't do that really if uh, if I 
I have some, you know, parts there that tape pulled off some of the tape or whatever. I just decided, you know what? You know I'm what, though? But sometimes, I'm leave you, it like that. sometimes you can do that because, once again, you know, the, it's a smaller plane and it's fine. Right. You know, you, you won't see, you, you see it more like if I came in and was just, you know, oh, dude, and I had to do this and you sh- and like you had to point to it and show me, more than likely I would never even notice it. Yeah, and so Hangar Rush is going to cause some of that stuff too. And so, yeah, True. you know, in the end, it's like, uh, you know. I don't, so, uh, I don't, I'm another, not Spencer level another thing that you can care. do, another thing you can do that I'll pass along, Mike, is use a Q-tip. Uh, what do you mean? To put paint on the Q-tip and then rub the Q-tip on it? Don't rub it. Dab it. Oh, uh, okay. Just dab it. Well, good. And That's then you don't have the brush. Before. You That's don't have awesome. the brush. <laughs> <laughs> Once you again, after bastard. the fact, right? You know, <laughs> no, no, but again, you before, bastard. That's before I, before I just gave up completely. So that's awesome. Oh, <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, so you gave up, and now we just gave you something before it happened. Yeah. yeah. Before yeah. you use the brush, yeah. just get a, a Q-tip. Just touch the tip of the Progress. Q-tip in there, and then just dab it because it you want it to be really light. Don't push okay. on it and get it to run in a big puddle, but you just want to dab it. Dab, 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 dab. dab. <laughs> push the Q-tip through the foam. Uh, and then you shouldn't have any brush strokes, but you should be able to fix the – if you want to fix the blue overspray – you sh- you can do that as well. With the gold. I have decided I want to. I feel like it's uh, you know it gives it some character, uh, even okay. if it's well. you know not really that scale or anything. But you know that's my st- I, I, it has a good story. I feel like you know it yeah, was no, blue, and now it's story. gold, and that's just weather. You know that's fine. Uh, it just it knocked the paint off, and yeah, I get yeah, it. whatever. But you could do if you did that. You could actually take that t- Q tip. Oh, that's a good idea. I, mean, that I will consider ago. that because yeah. I I think I'd like to consider yeah. that for the. Uh, inside where the engines are, where the fan blades mm-hmm. are, I didn't get quite the gold all the way to that point, and I could see where I sure. might be able to use a Q-tip and just sort of roll it along a little bit like a roller, you can uh, do that. and kind yep. of roll you it can along do that too. to see if that works. Yep. Uh, and yep. Hopefully, don't get it on any of the. See, the there you go. Fan. So anyway, uh, so that's that, and then let's see what else did I do. I oh built a helmet. Yeah, a helmet that was for. Your I helmet have for it. your uh, your motor gl- or motor <laughs> for my paramotor. paramotor. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Paramotor helmet. Yeah, helmet. we were working on that down here. Yeah, on my uh, on my solo flight, I flew with my helmet, and then just like shooting range earplugs because I didn't have my ear oh, covers right. on, on my helmet yet, and so uh, my neighbor is really good with you know tools and stuff, and so he helped me make sure that it was measured up right and. You know, we measured five times, not just twice. You know, <laughs> twice, cut once. We measured yeah. five yeah. times. You measure five and, times and then cut once. And good. yeah, and then and he drilled that thing out and he did a really good job. Um, and I mean, I I don't I don't know. I might have been able to do that on my own, but you know, I don't I I probably would have gave up halfway through or something. And just said, sure, forget sure. it. It's just going to be lopsided. I don't care. Uh, but That's it looks cool. really nice. He did a really good job. And uh, it looks really well. Nice. You uh, you have a trip coming up too, I think. Oh yeah, I do. We uh, we need to reach out. Yes. Well, uh, wait, we we have that in the budget for that. <laughs> what, isn't it like three trips, four trips you've done this year? I know he's just Mister. I Trippy. dug deep into my points. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, gotcha. I found a way points. to pay for this trip. With my points, <laughs> and we well, appreciate then, uh, it. The Park Flyer Podcast, guys, we uh, we we applaud your efforts. That's right. <laughs> uh, you know, so uh, the Holly Springs, it, it's it's the Holly Springs uh, yearly event, right? Yep. This is the uh, uh, charity event for uh, I think it's called Meg Smiles. I might get that wrong. Um, Nope, Meg Smiles. That's uh, yeah. Doug Meg uh, Smiles Leroy Foundation. and his group down there. Yep, right. and uh, right. I just got on uh, Eventbrite and signed up for it. It was perfect and easy to do, uh, and um, so now I'm registered, ready to go down there. So it's called Wings Over Springs Charity Electric Fly-In for 2019. It's Saturday, the 31st of August, 2019. The gates open at 8 p.m. with a pilot's meeting at 9.30, and you can register uh, to be a a pilot at hssrcg.org. Uh, the public is welcome uh, starting at 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. And uh, all the proceeds benefit Meg's Smile Foundation. Uh, you can go to 
www.megsmile.org uh, for that as well. Uh, and last year you were able to go, correct? No. We sent you there last year, I think. No. The year before. You uh, didn't? This is your first time? Just, I was just, yes, it's my first time. I was just happened to be at Holly Springs two years ago. Uh, my brother lives oh, in I that see. same area. And it's visiting right. my brother. Um, and so I met, that's when I met Doug. And uh, Oh, that's right. And, and then so we had this conversation and Doug said, yeah, you should come out for the thing. And I tried to come out, but I couldn't work it out. And so this, I promised him this year that I would come out and uh, and go to flying. So that's what I do. Well, awesome. they do a ver- they they do a really good job. They do a video. I think we have one. Uh, at one point, I think they sent us a video. And I remember, I don't remember the numbers. Doug, and maybe we can get Doug to come on and and talk about it. But uh, if I remember sure. right, the numbers are pretty big for their attendance uh, for for yeah. a thing like that. So yeah. It's only third year, I think, or something. Fourth year. That's I don't amazing. Know, they They've been in not very many. I've only done it a couple times. Right. So, so you get to well, see your brother and you get to go to uh, to this event. So you get to roll yes. two things into one, huh? I'm actually going to go see <laughs> my father, too. Oh, well, three. see, I don't All feel right. so bad that he had to dig for the points because he's visiting yeah. family. Quite frankly, <laughs> uh, you know, I, don't take this personally, Doug, but it's really a trip about my family and then I'm going to be there. Yeah, at the that's same right. Time, so. <laughs> and he's going to go and he's going to go have fun. That's what I'm going <laughs> to. That's the way to do it. So. Yeah, I'm going to hey, have fun Art, while I'm having fun. So that's the idea. I know. Right. Well, so Doug Leroy d- has been on before and he uh, and I think Jason Getchman both put a, a, a fantastic, um, you know, event on. They've they've talked real highly of it when we've talked to him about it. The video that I did see. Uh, from last time was just phenomenal, and uh, they they do get a big turnout. From what I remember, when he was on before, he was saying that they get quite the turnout. So having the public invited is is a really good deal too, because it kind of they they do a good job, you know, interacting with the public and teaching them more about you know the AMA and the you know how to what it's what it takes to fly, and you know maybe they increase their membership with it too. You never know. And I don't want to cheat Doug out of some of the things that are going on there, but one of the things I saw. Uh, that I didn't know was there. They have a, I think it's called three three GPP, uh, where they oh the drone they, racing, the drone racing, yeah, uh, right, right. And uh, so I, I, I'm like, wow, that'll be cool. Um, so I'm interested to see what that looks like, you know. And uh, yeah, it should be fun. I think we'll we'll have a good time. Good. Can't what plane ahead. are you gonna bring out? I am going to bring out uh, fun racer. Yeah, the fundraiser. Thanks, fundraiser. Sorry, my <laughs> my brain just turned off completely. He was he was so excited going through his list of airplanes that he's going to bring. Like, oh, oh man, I can't bring that one. It's too big. <laughs> oh yeah, that's not that one either. So you're going to bring the fundraiser out. Yeah, my fundraiser, and uh, maybe maybe the talent. I might I might bring the talent out and let people take rides. Uh, I was thinking about doing that. Do you have so a spare set of goggles or whatever? That they can? No, I just give them my goggles and I'll fly it while they. Oh, and you fly it. I got to take you a ride. That's kind of cool. They have to sure. have bad sure. eyesight, though, because my goggles have <laughs> extra added vision. Glasses in them. In them. <laughs> I could sure. probably take off that piece anyway, now that I think about it. Yeah, you might, but if they have drone racing over there, I'm sure somebody over there has true. goggles that true. you can just flip to your channel yeah, or whatever. True. So. Yep. Just make sure that you're not flying that thing while they're drone racing. I, I can hear a lot of angry drone pilots if you're... <laughs> If, if you're on their frequency and all of a sudden they're looking at your plane and not their drone. Well. Because uh, can't you see what, if you're on the wrong, if the frequency, yeah. don't they, if they get too close. Yeah, it yeah, would. It would that would over. happen. Yep. Yeah. So That's funny. Yep, that could be good. Well, Jay, um, we don't really care what you did this week because uh, we're out of time. But uh, <laughs> Well, that's good because I didn't do anything <laughs> this week. <laughs> I know it's hard to believe this. You know, we get together, we start chit chatting about what we did, and we know we barely get through our hour. So, it's pretty sad. Poor kid. Well, we're excited nope. that you're going to be there. Uh, there's some interviews I think set up. Uh, we've got another podcast coming out between uh, now and and uh, the thirty thirty first. I think is when it happens. The end of the month. Yeah. So so, mm-hmm, so yeah. We'll, maybe we can get Doug on and can talk about it a little bit. Yeah. If we don't, we'll talk to him beforehand and see what all's going on and then kind of report on it. So, and then I yeah. think after you get back, we'll have some interviews from down there and I think uh I think everybody'll have a good time. I uh you know, I think it's uh you said it was 8 to I mean 5 or what was it? 8 to 8 or 8 to 5 or something? 
Well, the public is invited uh, from 10 to 2, I believe. Well, well, whatever the length of time is, you know, I'm sure that that'll be 10 minutes for every hour that I'm there. You know what I mean? Because I want to have fun sure, some of the time. Sure. So. Yeah, and, you know, that's tough, and, and we totally get it. You know, if you're trying to do interviews and fly at the same time, it's a little yeah, trouble. Yeah, you can't do that. It's too hard. We ha- we had that problem at the la- at the uh, yeah we did at the electric festival yeah, you know because we, we were like, out here, flying hold, hold this we microphone I gotta go fly stuff. yeah hold this microphone right, and go exactly. fly you can say stuff if you want we'll, we'll record That's it right. if we like it yeah. correct well it sounds like you need uh, some assistance so we'll uh, we'll find you some travel buddies to go out there and fly with that hey if you can work that out that'd be great. <laughs> Uh, well, that's uh, their annual event, and um, yeah, definitely uh, they put on a good one. So if you're in the Holly Springs area, uh, Doug Leroy and his group um, there will put on the uh, charity event and make sure you stop by and tell them that the Park Flyer podcast sent you because Mike's really going to go there signing autographs. Yeah, I'm going to sign autographs at, for the thousands of people that are going to line up. <laughs> <laughs> and kissing babies. What I'm gonna do is I, I'm gonna I'm gonna stand in front. I'm gonna stand at the line where they're paying, and that's the t- picture I'm gonna take. Is like, yeah, these are people waiting oh. for my autograph. Woo! That's right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's too funny. Well, uh, what's up for this uh, coming week, Jay? Since you didn't do anything last week, you got something lined up. You're still working on your trailer. Uh, still working on the trailer. Um, I'm working on getting parts for my 3D printer. Well, that's right. Uh, I still have to made in a plane or two, so hopefully the weather will break a little bit and I'll get out there and go fly. Well, we should all do that. Yeah, I didn't have a chance to go fly this week either because it was just too hot and I was working. So kind of we'll get back out there, though. So, yeah, I think Mike's the only one who, who actually got to, to do anything this week. Uh, well, it wasn't even RC really, but at least he got yeah. out. Yeah, you get to yeah, go out and do your flying. Pair. Paris yeah, I, I, flew, RC, I flew a couple more RC flights. Stuff. Yep, a couple more solo yeah. flights in. Yep. That's good. I, I did actually get to fly as well, but it was in a real, in a full scale, not a. Oh, RC that's right. You had your so. ferry stuff that you did. Yeah, one of my uh, buddies had a, a really expensive airplane that uh, he doesn't let anybody fly, and he came to me and asked me if I would take it to Florida for him. So I wow. volunteered to do that, and uh, yeah, flew it across the country from Arizona to Florida. And it was. Uh, and, and didn't was a good you have trip. to? And didn't you have to uh, almost have to take a Greyhound yourself? And they were gonna like send you up to. Alabama oh yeah, to go, that was to go, uh, to go trying to, to Miami or something. It that's was, a whole other story. Crazy yeah. like that. It would have been really funny if you yeah. got to like wherever, and then it's like, hey, that's my plane. Yeah, no doubt. Uh, I landed in a little town <laughs> right. uh, called P- uh, Plot Plataka. Plata- Plata- Pl- anyway. It's just north of Orlando, and uh, I had to figure out a way from there to Orlando, and the rental car place said, yeah, we're out of cars. So that kind of hosed me, and so I ran over to the train station and uh, bought a train ticket to get down there because I was trying to catch a flight back to Arizona. And uh, the lady goes, hey, now that you bought your ticket, the train is five hours delayed. So I was like, oh, well, how about a Greyhound bus? You know, you guys, it's only like two hours down the road. She goes, yeah, we can sell you a ticket. You got to go to Jacksonville and change buses. I was like, dude, I'm not going northbound to go southbound. That's stupid. I mean, it's like an hour to ja- hour and a half to Jacksonville, wait for an hour, and then go. I wouldn't have got to Orlando till like midnight. Yeah, so and, I told her, I was and like, once you got up work. to Jacksonville, didn't you have to like it was like a three or four hour, five hour delay? Not delay, uh, but it was like well, they were late. To yeah, the to change it was like a it was like an hour and a half wait, but they were already late. The bus was late. It was going to be Great. late. So the bus wasn't going to get there till like the same time the train was, and then it was like, okay, do I take the train? I... Anyway, finally the rental car place called me and said, hey, we have some cars that got delivered earlier, so if you want the car, come get it. And I was like, oh, that'll work. Because I was just looking for a way, you know, to get down uh, back. Yeah, you'd still be there if uh, you didn't get that car rental. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, it was it was funny. So it was a good time though. I I had I had a good time. I got to stop by our alma mater, alma mater. Uh, I you stopped got by to go Louisiana buy tech, tech, huh? Awesome. I did. I got some gas in uh, Louisiana Tech. Took uh, a tour of their aviation uh, school there, and uh, I went to the hometown where I was born, out in West Texas. So I landed in both of those spots. So. I like that they told you after you bought the tickets about the whole delay. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> it's exactly. a karma thing. That it's is a karma. karma. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> see, karma thing. see you guys. That's crazy. Oh man. 
It's insane. So see, Mike, it, it doesn't always happen to you. It happens to us too. Just maybe not RC related. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes it's more in life. They always find out after the fact. Okay, wait, I bought the ticket. Now you're telling me I have to wait for five hours to catch my train? And literally I bought the ticket because the train was supposed to show up in like 15 minutes. Because when I got there, you know, it was like, oh, there's a train that comes by here in 15 minutes. And if you buy it from the conductor, it's expensive. But if you buy it online, it's cheaper. So I bought it online. And then the lady that's sitting at the train station, who, by the way, works for Greyhound, not the train station, said, oh, by the way, I went on their website, <laughs> went on their website and, the, and it's delayed. So anyway, it was kind of a funny story. I was on the phone with Jay and Jay was howling because he's like, oh, my gosh, <laughs> it totally happens to you. So I was whining because I couldn't get out of the town. It was like Groundhog Day. Every time I went somewhere, they'd be like, you know, oh, nope, can't leave. You know, you're stuck. So, and I wanted to get out of there before the weather, you know, hit. Because the weather was kind of getting nasty. So, but I made it maybe back I'll, unscathed. Maybe I'll finish my uh, painting my plane. Because uh, now it's got the, the fuse. I just got the fuse, and I don't know how much more, if anything, I'm going to do to the wings. So... Um, I just have the blue, the blue wing tips, and that might be the entirety of what I do to that. It's hard to, it's, what, yeah. Once I put it together, I'll make a decision because the wings come on and off. So uh, once I put it together, I'll make a decision about whether I really want to put more ink on it or not. So I would look at, um, you know, the leading edge of the jet is usually metal. I would look at actually painting it gold like your nacelles. That way it matches. Okay. Here, so. Yeah, I can do that. I and mean, that's, that's reasonable. I'm just saying that's I don't really want to do much more design work. I'm not really... Uh, excited yeah, you don't about. have to do much more. Yeah. yeah, so that's a good idea. Or I mean, you I know, or you can pick up some stars or you know something sticker wise and put something on there. Sure. Yeah. I mean, I, mean I'm, I may do that, but I'm just I don't know that I'm gonna go with painting. The other thing I did was I got some uh, jars or some containers to hold pre-mixed paint because like the whole mixing thing was becoming a real hassle to me, so I I pre-mixed a bunch of paint. I hope that's gonna be okay to it. I don't know if that's gonna be a problem overall mm, no it shouldn't be a problem just don't keep it outside in the uh, heat no nah, yeah, it's inside, it it's inside. Yeah. Yeah. so i keep my paint in the refrigerator in my little refrigerator yeah in this Not case it's I just in the house, over your house. <laughs> <laughs> that's, the that's why you keep getting a blue tongue oh okay yeah exactly so well it looks like uh our hour is up once again we uh have talked a little bit about what we did this week and I think next week we'll uh, or next two weeks I guess we'll, uh, we'll try to have a, a topic because uh, Mike will be done and um, with his painting hopefully and we'll get the uh, Holly Springs things coming up so you know, we should be able to uh, get some good information here in two weeks well I appreciate you guys joining us for the podcast tonight uh, from Arizona I am Michael and from the hill Texas. I'm Jack. This is AK Mike in Texas. We'll see you in two weeks. Let's fly. You have been listening to the Park Flyer Podcast. Thank you for joining us and we look forward to your next visit. Please give our show a star rating and review and feel free to email us your questions, topics, or suggestions to parkflyerpodcast at gmail.com. 